What is a mirror? Speaking in strictly literal terms, it's a reflective pane of glass that we use to check our hair or the clothes we've decided to wear. Seriously, how did you match that shirt with those pants? But think about it another way. What is a mirror for? Well, it's for showing us ourselves, allowing us to see what everybody else around us does when they look in our direction. In that way, you could say that a mirror is honest. A mirror doesn't lie, but that doesn't mean they can't hold secrets behind that looking glass. Also known by the alternate name of the Red Sea object, SCP-093 is not a mirror itself. It's actually a red disc that has been carved from cinnabar. Cinnabar, for anyone not already aware, is a toxic ore of mercury that has been crafted into jewelry and ornaments in many parts of the world over the centuries, thanks to its ruby-like red coloration. The SCP-093 disc itself is only around 7.62 centimeters in diameter, fitting comfortably in most average size palms. All around the object are a number of symbols carved into its surface, strange circular engravings of unknown origin. The color of the red stone disc will also apparently change based on whatever regrets are being carried by the person who holds it. There seems to be some link between color changes and the mental state or level of knowledge possessed by the subject. To put it in much simpler terms, think of SCP-093's color like one of those novelty mood rings you see in gift shops that change to different hues supposedly to match a person's mood, although in actuality, it's normally changed by their body heat. The same cannot be said of the Red Sea object. It is stunningly accurate in peering into your soul and diagnosing the darkness within. If ever you come into contact with this baby, you might even discover that it knows you better than you. So, a weird stone disc doesn't sound all that impressive, does it? And what does that have to do with mirrors? Well, SCP-093 happens to have a certain attachment to mirrors, and we mean that very, very literally. If the Red Sea object is ever not in front of a mirror or not being held by someone, it will speed towards the closest reflective surface. As it rolls its way in the direction of the nearest mirror or mirror-like surface, SCP-093 is capable of building up phenomenal speeds. Although, curiously, it never appears to cause any impact damage when it finally arrives, neither to itself nor the mirror it latches onto. Which brings us to the next inevitable question. What happens when SCP-093 is placed on or attaches itself to a mirror? Does it create a copy of the person who last touched it? A clone that reflects all the darkest parts of someone's personality? Maybe it can allow the holder of SCP-093 to themselves become like a mirror, bending light away from their body in order to become functionally invisible. Well, it's actually neither of these. The truth is far more strange and existential. During extensive testing, the SCP Foundation investigated the potential anomalous uses for SCP-093, paying especially close attention to how the Red Sea object interacted with mirrors. After a number of unsuccessful tests, they finally learned what happens when someone places the disc onto a mirror. They move into the mirror. Any mirror that SCP-093 is placed against or otherwise attaches itself to is transformed into a portal of anomalous origin and destination. Naturally, the first instinct of the Foundation personnel examining this artifact is to send through an expedition to explore the other side of this newly formed mirror portal. So, that's what they did. They gathered up a member of D-Class, the imprisoned criminals that the Foundation uses as expendable subjects for dangerous tests. The subject was given water, ready to eat meals, a flashlight, a gun, and a concealed knife, the latter of which the D-Class was not made aware of. The first subject, despite having a past of murder and attempted suicide, seemed to regret his actions and willingly agreed to cooperate with testing, and as a result, SCP-093 emitted a blue glow that also tinted the view in the mirror. Perhaps on the other side he expected to meet his end and expected it as a righteous punishment for his life of sin. Stepping through the mirror to the other side of the looking glass, the D-Class found himself in an empty field, not another person or even a single tree in sight. Traversing forwards, he quickly came across a section of grass that was barren, wilted, and dying, in the center of which was a hole. Climbing in as per Foundation instructions, the man found only dirt for about a hundred meters. But then, something strange happened. The dirt around him gradually gave way to a concrete enclosure that the man remarked stank of something awful. The room was lit by a series of ceiling light fixtures, some of which were already broken. Three doors were positioned on either side of the enclosure 
with an extra door at the far end, blocked by some fallen metal shelving. The existence of a place like this seemed to imply that someone was present beyond the portal, or at least, they had been. This ancient underground bunker, lost to time, seemed to have traces that people had once lived there. In one of the adjacent rooms, the ceiling seemed to be coated in a smelly brown sludge. But it was in here that the D-Class discovered a makeshift cot, wooden crates containing foodstuffs and empty water bottles, and a book lying next to the cot. When he attempted to approach the book, he was assaulted by a screeching noise like grinding metal. The door was beginning to close. As the D-Class dashed out, the body cam he'd been fitted with seemed to pick up a figure, standing at the end of the corridor where the seventh door was. It opened the door from behind just to crack, looked in, and silently shut it once more. Finding only crumpled newspapers and food rations, the Foundation ordered the intrepid D-Class to return to the mirror. Suddenly, something tugged at the lifeline secured around his waist. Something was pulling him up out of the tunnel. While trying to get back to the mirror, the D-Class witnessed a group of 37 figures, all of them faceless, with no discernible features to speak of. In his escape, he opened fire with the gun he'd been issued, but not at the crowd, at something bigger. A massive humanoid creature around 50 times bigger than an average person was crawling around on the ground. Like the other figures, this giant was without a face, pulling itself towards the mirror as the D-Class was reeled back through the mirror by a cable and pulley. After their first glimpse into the world within SCP-093, naturally the Foundation was curious to learn more. The next test revealed more about this other reality. For one, that the Red Sea object seemed to choose its locations based on the personal history of whoever was traveling through a mirror. This time, it was a female D-Class who had killed two children while stealing a car. She arrived at a farmhouse which had a bunker of its own, like the first test. Much like then, there were definite signs that someone had inhabited the bunker before her arrival. But most telling were the three skeletons and empty revolver. It seemed that everyone in this world lived in bunkers at some point, possibly to hide from the various faceless creatures that roamed the landscape. Additionally, any remnants of a civilization that were uncovered seemed to fit the aesthetic of the 1950s. However, this civilization also seemed to have technology compared to that found in the 21st century. The D-Class discovered a laptop, the casing of which also seemed to resemble a 50s style. Booting the machine up revealed the final moments of its operating system, something called Faithful OS. Instances of the same operating system seemed to crop up everywhere the more the Foundation sent expeditions through the mirrors. The world that SCP-093 had offered access to seemed to be brimming with advanced technology, far more impressive inventions than anything that exists in our world. Not just computers either, but this world even had functional self-driving cars. Suck on that, Elon Musk. And yet, even with all that advancement, they were still stuck in the 50s, 1953 to be exact, as one expedition discovered that this was the last recorded year of this world. But something had clearly occurred here, some sort of devastating event that had wiped out almost all of humanity and driven the survivors into underground bunkers where they eventually perished. But what? The sudden arrival of those faceless creatures? Or was it more to do with that strange, viscous brown sludge that seemed to be cropping up all over the place? This world seemed to be abundant with religious imagery, even down to the naming of Faithful OS. Symbols of hands clasped together in prayer and other iconography linked to Christianity could be found everywhere. From the outer sides of buildings, to the computers and folders found when the Foundation expeditions delved deeper into the cities and offices. In one, they discovered a waiting area assumed to be connected to a doctor's office, which provided more clues as to just what had happened here. Examining the contents of the receptionist's computer in this office revealed that the doctors of this world were deeply ingrained in theology and were responsible for treating their patients for a number of strange symptoms. One entry described a woman, citizen Jennifer Mazurka, who seemingly suffered a lapse of the heart. This apparent condition caused her to sin, committing adultery before she was admitted into the Lord's and our hands for cleansing of mind and body. It appeared that this world took religion to an extreme, employing doctors to cure sinners of their trespasses through the use of something referred to as the Lord's Tears. That brown fluid splattered all over this mirror world. This substance, as the Foundation soon learned, was harvested from the giant faceless creatures that roamed freely around this place. But the question still remained, why? The answers were uncovered in another expedition, 
this time by a foundation service technician who was able to make SCP-093 turn a bright red color when he affixed it to a mirror. He was transported to a room with a rotating pillar, with beams of light that shone upon other copies of SCP-093. These various copies of the mirror portal system seem to be leading to other mysterious worlds. As if looking back behind the curtain, the technician found an adjacent room filled with computer equipment, monitoring these other worlds and categorizing them as either clean, unclean, or lost. So what do we have? Where does all of this leave us besides scratching our heads? Clearly some sort of cataclysmic disaster occurred in one of these mirror worlds. It had once been a place where technology had boomed in the 1950s, but that was also steeped in religious beliefs, to the extent where sinners were treated with a strange substance extracted from those faceless creatures. It seems as if some time ago, a godlike being known only as him arrived in one of these worlds and this served as the catalyst for such an advancement in technology. However, he had also deemed this world to be unclean and full of sin, mandating a purge of all sinners in order to cleanse the world. As a result, a holy war took place to determine who was worthy of salvation. A deeply religious society formed around the arrival of him, and their primary weapon against the sinners was this brown liquid, his holy tears. And those monsters prowling around? One part of the unclean, their sins given form. Except none of that was true. There was never a war, no fight between holiness and cleanliness. The truth was this being, this eldritch abomination had arrived to conquer. Using the disks, like SCP-093, he traveled to that world, fed them lies, and turned the people into his followers, becoming the master of their world and eventually its destroyer. Ultimately, SCP-093 is a warning, a look at what happens when a being like this takes over. The broken, dead world that the Red Sea object transports us to is a legacy of his destruction, a false god preying on humanity and their beliefs like a theological predator. Then, when his work is done, he moves on to find a new world to conquer. We can only hope that his gaze never rests upon ours, or that what the Red Sea object knows of our many sins will be the least of our problems. Now go check out SCP-2317 The Devourer of Worlds, A Door to Another World, and SCP-001 The Black Moon for more monsters we definitely don't want to encounter in our dimension.